So, hi, hi guys, thank you for coming. My name is uh, Mario Fusco, probably you know me already. I believe that I didn't miss any Boxed Days Ticino so far. Um, um, I work for Red Hat and I'm the project lead of Drools and it's really, let me say that it's really great to see you in person after two years. Uh, it was a bit, a bit emotional for me to enter the, the Congress Center this morning. And uh, w one of the reasons that, yeah, of course one of the reasons is for this COVID situation uh, we are going through, but the other reason is that uh, uh, it, in the meanwhile, uh, we, we, we lost a, a dear friend of, of Boxed Days Ticino, uh, and uh, I guess he didn't miss any edition of the Voxed Days Ticino like, like me. And uh, yeah, when I passed through the gate of, of the Congress Center, I, I, I felt that I was missing uh, Massimo. And uh, well, I, I believe this is uh, the best place to uh, remember him and, and say ciao to Massimo for the last time. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm here uh, to speak about uh, uh, to, to give some hints ab about uh, part of my job uh, and, and try to give some advices that matches my experience in the uh, latest year as a Java developer. Uh, in particular, I, I want to give some hint about how to design a Java API. So, well, you should all know what an API is. is a, 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 an interface that is used for two pieces of software to communicate uh, uh, between them. And of course, if something goes wrong in the communication, you can have a, 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 a bad result like this, okay? Uh, and uh, mainly, you use an API, uh, and you, you as a developer use an API to achieve some task, okay? You want to send, uh, use an API or Twitter to send a tweet, or you want to, I don't know, use the API of Google Maps to show the maps, a map of a place uh, uh, on your web page or, or whatever, okay? So mostly you are consumer of an API, and uh, an API is basically a, a, indeed a contract between the provider of that service and, and the consumer. So the providers say, okay, you have to invoke me with these uh, arguments uh, in this way, and uh, I will provide this uh, sort of uh, um, uh, result formatted in this way, and so on, okay? And, and, and mostly, we are consumer of API, of course, but from time to time, it happens, it happens quite frequently to me, but I, I believe that it is not a so uh, a rare uh, task for everybody to design a, a small or, or big API. Uh, again, we write software. Software is made of components, and these components need a contract to interact to each other. So it, it happens, I believe, quite frequently that you are also uh, uh, asked to design an API. And again, the, the purpose of this tool is to give a few hints about uh, how to do this in, in uh, well, it is in Java. I believe that some of the principles can be applied also in other languages. And uh, these are the basic principles for me to design a, a good API, which are probably a, a lot. And, and, and sometimes they are all, all also in, um, in contrast. So designing a good API, it's, it's also a, a balanced effort to, to match all this thing in a reasonable way. Um, j just to list them, okay, uh, to me, a good API should be uh, um, intuitive, understandable, learnable, discoverable, meaning that what you normally do when you are learning a, an API, okay, 
if you are a very disciplinated uh, developer, you will start reading the documentation. I'm not, so I will just click control space on IDE to check what the other comp auto completion uh, uh, gives me, uh, suggests me, and this is how I discover how the API works. So it, it, this means that it, it, it is Im very important to give uh, meaningful uh, names to meet the documents, for, for instance, okay? It should, it should be concise, it should overwhelm you with tons of method, it should be uh, minimal indeed, uh, idiomatic, so should uh, be coherent with, with the idioms of the language in which the, the, of the programming language in which the, the API is provided should be flexible and should be evol evolvable. And this is also related with the fact that it should be minimal because the more you add stuff, the more you have to maintain them, the more you have more stuff that interacts to each other. And, you are in, and if you add too much, then it will be much more difficult to make this thing evolve. Should be well documented, uh, have the right level of abstraction uh, have a use the type system. We are not doing JavaScript, you know. We, we have a type system. Please, let's use it. Um, it should have a limited number of entry points. And the, the last point is also quite important to me, and uh, I will come to back to this later. Uh, it should respect the principle of least astonishment. I shouldn't be surprised by the behavior of an API while I'm using it. If uh, a method is called uh, sum and it doesn't uh, do the sum, but it does a multiplication, it's something quite surprising, okay? You, you don't do this. Uh, you cannot uh, foresee everything. So as I said, it should be uh, evolvable and uh, you cannot predict the future, but you should uh, uh, make, as Venkat wrote in this uh, uh, tweet, you should make the future affordable. You should be ready to, to, to future changes. Okay, this doesn't mean, of course, that uh, you can add uh, a map to object to object to each and every method of, the, of, every, of your API, just in case you may want to, need to use it. Uh, but uh, again, the, the best strategy to have uh, your API uh, evolvable is also to keep it minimal. It, it, it is not a good enough reason. Uh, this is a simple thing to do. This is, this is a simple thing to implement, so let's add it. It's not a good enough reason because, yeah, probably you will need a couple of hours to implement that new features. Probably you really don't need it, and, and uh, you will have to consider how that feature uh, uh, will uh, work in combination with all, all other features of your software, and this could create damage in future, okay? Uh, uh, there is a, uh, some very uh, uh, common example of this thing also in the Java world. Let's think about the Java serialization, for instance. Okay, so Java serialization is something that has been introduced uh, since the very f uh, first version of Java, of, or maybe in Java 1.1, I don't know if it, it was present in Java 1.0. Uh, anyway, from that point on, every time uh, they, have to, uh, they have to add a new feature to Java, they have to figure out how that thing plays with serialization, which is which co could be a totally mess. I remember I was following uh, and participating on the mining links to the development of uh, Project Lambda at time, and I believe that solid six months or more of work have been spent only to make the Lambda, to figure out how to serialize a Lambda expression. So, and of course this happened at the, 20 years after or, or 18 years after the serialization has been introduced. And you know, it's not a, a great, uh, Java serialization is probably not the best thing 
that we have in Java, but it has a huge impact on everything that, that uh, uh, we did after. So I'm saying this as an example to say, okay, if you are not really sure, the best choice you can take now is leave it out for now. You will have always time to add it later. Once it's there, it's there. Unless you don't want to break backward compatibility. Okay, uh, so uh, I wanted to give some very practical, uh, so this is just a general idea, but I wanted to give some very practical uh, hints with a few examples, of course, the, 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 the one of the first point is documentation. As I say, I try to figure out what a method uh, does, but figuring out is not uh, uh, always the best thing. Uh, documentation helps a lot. Unfortunately, uh, often the documentation is written like text, a set name, it's set name, okay, which is something like this, right? This is the, the same level of documentation uh, 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 that, that this Java Docs provides. Uh, but but you, I, I, in reality, even if in a simple uh, setter method, you can, say, you can say a lot. You can say uh, which are the allowed uh, ranges, what happens if you provide an out of range uh, uh, value. Uh, another thing that is very important, uh, if that thing is, is thread safe or not, for instance. So you can provide a lot of information. And if you don't, uh, you leave your user, the user of your API with a lot of open question mark. And, and the, yeah, what this method does, uh, what is this, this state that you are giving me, uh, what's the difference between get leave and uh, get the effect level and why that other level is not so effective. And yeah, you leave your user with lots of question mark. And, uh, and yeah, you, you, you document your stuff uh, in, in the uh, mm, uh, most possible explicat explicative and transparent way. Okay, uh, so this is what about documentation. Quite related to it is that uh, uh, the thing that we often do, especially in Java, to add lots of overloads for convenience, okay? This is an extreme uh, 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 example, which is the string builder that have like 20 uh, um, overload of the same method. Uh, sometimes you do this in Java, you are sort of obliged to do this in Java because of the primitive uh, types, but for instance, in this case, I believe, I don't understand why we have an append for, for a normal object, for a string, or for a church sequence. Basically, you are doing the two string of that thing and appending to the string builder. So do we really need three different methods? I don't know. Okay, this is another example of a covenance method. This is my made up, made up API to place uh, stock orders. And I have a method uh, to sell stocks. And uh, uh, instead, I have three me different methods to buy. Why? Because in my domain model, uh, in this example, uh, when I buy something, the price could be uh, fixed or could be a range. And uh, I may or may not have a commission on this uh, transaction. So I decided to add, uh, I needed to uh, uh, model this behavior in my API and I added these three methods, okay? So what's wrong with this API? This API has some, has some uh, bad design choices. Uh, first of all, yeah, these three overloads are confusing. The order of argument is not consistent. In, in the cell method, we uh, put for the price first and then the quantity, and, and in the buy once, we do the opposite. And uh, I, 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 we have a, a method with a long list of arguments, and even worse, they are of the same time, so type. So it's very uh, um, easy to, 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 to uh, put the, 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 a value in the wrong position in the, in the list of arguments, okay? So wh what do you do to fix this? The reality is that uh, you have this 
complex uh, concept in your domain, which is the price, which is not just a number, but it's a number with a few options, or could be a, a, a two numbers, it could be a range, it, there could be a commission or not. You just model this thing with a, with a price object. And at, at, at this point, you will have a very uniform and simple API to expose. And uh, regarding this price object, another best practice that I wanted to show is that uh, what I like to do generally is not to provide, uh, uh, is not to expose in my API the constructor. I prefer to use uh, static factory methods. Why this? Because, uh, well, the syntax is, uh, is a little nicer also to read. You don't pollute uh, your DSL, if you want to call it so, with the new keyword. But more important is that uh, you can return uh, different subclasses. If you are directly called a constructor, you have to return an object of that class. If you have static factory method, you can uh, uh, return a different implementation, and you can uh, check precondition. And in case, uh, I don't know, a precondition is not uh, 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 matched, you can uh, uh, um, return a specific instance of that uh, class or a subclass of it to model this uh, specific situation. Another thing that I like is to use Fluent API. And uh, in, in combination with, this, uh, with that price thing, you can, you can see how uh, the, the, the difference between the two approach. The, with the traditional setter, you create the price, and then you say set commission, set the fact which is, that is gross or not, and, and finally you can use that price object to call my buy method. Uh, if you have a fluent API, you don't need, you don't need to do this because you can uh, fluently uh, uh, create and configure this value and uh, uh, use directly inside the, the method invocation, uh, and in the end, it reads much, much better. Okay. And of course, a, a, a very good example of a fluent API in Java is the, is the stream API, uh, which is very nice, very uh, well uh, designed. But even here, uh, there are a few problems in my opinion. W one problem is the name consistency here. You know, uh, drop while and skip are doing exactly the same uh, thing. One is uh, skipping a fixed number of items, and uh, while the drop while is uh, uh, skipping a, a, a num uh, some item until a, a given predicate is matched. But you are, in both cases, you are skipping uh, uh, items. So why using two different verbs for, for the same operation? It's confusing. You could call it skip and skip while. And you understand that it's the same thing, which the only difference that uh, in one case you are skipping a fixed number, and in the other case you are skipping the until a predicate is matched. But it's the same operation that is uh, modeled with two different verbs. So there is a name consistency problem here. OK. Another suggestion is uh, um, always use the weakest possible type in your API. Uh, here I'm giving you an example about the, the argument. So yeah, I'm concatenating a list of string. It's an array list of string. But in reality, so my API allows you, this method allows you to concatenate an array list of string. But in reality, I don't care which list implementation is, so why I have an array list in my signature. And uh, I, re I also don't care if of, of the order in this case, so I have a list and not a collection. And I also don't care about uh, uh, how many items there are in this collection, so why a collection and not just an iterable. So you do this process again and again, uh, weakening the type that you use until you reach the minimal thing that works for you. Why you do this? Because 
Of course, while, while doing this, you enlarge the applicability of your method. And if you don't do this, the, 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 the solution then if, is that you need to add more of those convenience methods that we were mentioning before, meaning that you will have a lot of, of overloading, confusing overloading. Instead, in this way, I'm having one single method that cover all cases, uh, all the iterable, the collection, set, list, whatever you want, okay? And the same thing applies also for the return type. Uh, in this other example, I have a person, this method is passed with a person, and uh, it returns a list of all addresses of the uh, uh, sibling of that person. So that's fine, it's okay. But uh, again, why am I returning a list? I, I don't think this is an ordinary thing. It's, it's a, a collection on addresses, but there is no reasonable order in this thing. And uh, at some point I realized that two siblings could easily live at the same address. So probably I'm having duplication here. And to avoid duplication, then I decide, decide okay, it's easy. Uh, instead of using a list, I will use a set. So at this point, I will uh, get rid of all duplication. The problem is if you do this, this thing doesn't compile anymore because in your signature, you are required to return a list. And then what you have to do to avoid breaking back backward compatibility, yeah, this doesn't compile. And what you have to do to, bre to avoid breaking uh, backward compatibility is an expensive copy. You have to create an array list and, and move the item from the set to the array list. What's the problem? Uh, what's the root cause of this problem? I I it's again in the signature. Uh, I'm doing this to avoid breaking uh, backward compatibility. But if I originally returned the collection, I was free. Uh, at that point, I would be free to change the internal implementation from a list to a set without affecting the user of my API, without breaking the backward compatibility of my API. Uh, another thing that uh, you, 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 I don't see often yet after like seven years that we have, seven years and a half, that we have lambdas in our uh, in, in in Java is that you should uh, realize that we have lambdas in Java and make life easier for people to use them. Okay, so if I define a listener in this way with two methods, what's a, what is the problem? The problem is that it's not a functional interface because it has two abstract methods. So you cannot use lambda to 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 define a listener. Okay, and then the best thing you can do is creating an anonymous inner class, which is very verbose and not na really nice to read in, in Java. What's the solution of this? Instead of, of having uh, one single listener, you have two methods, one before and the other after. Okay, so you have two different listener, but in this way, uh, you can finally use a lambda or a, or a method reference, as in this example, um, to invoke, to register a, li a listener, which is a lot less verbose. And in reality, if you do so, if you even get rid of, of this listener, because if you think about it, what, what these listeners are now? They are just consumer of an event. So you really don't need to define anymore those uh, functional interfaces. You can just use the, the consumer uh, interfaces of the standard Java library. Okay, uh, if you know me, you know that uh, I really dislike the or hate uh, check at the exception. I, I never understood uh, the point of this, but the, the problem is not that I never understood the problem of this. The, the problem is that uh, it is dem statistically demonstrated that, that the majority of, of Java developers doesn't have a clue of what to put in a catch block. Uh, and, and, and the problem is that uh, you do stuff, uh, we, since we have checked the exception, it's very 
hard sometimes because, because of that to, to use lambda. They play very bad with lambda. And uh, in, in fact, this thing doesn't compile because the writer uh, method throws an I.O. exception, which is checked. Um, then uh, what you have to do is write, the only thing you can do in this case is write a try catch inside the lambda, which is very uh, hard to read. And, 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 and uh, as I said, for no reason, because uh, this is a, 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 a statistic produced by, by GitHub by analyzing a lot of uh, uh, repository uh, on, on GitHub, they wanted to understand what, peop what people does in catch blocks. And uh, I believe they don't do meaningful thing. At best, they log statement, uh, sometimes by printing the stack trace. Uh, some lots of catch blocks are empty. Uh, the most common to me things to do in this case is retrowing an exception as an unchecked one, as a runtime one, uh, and, and so on. But there is, it's really seldom that you can do some meaningful, take some meaningful action in, the, in this sketch block. And the problem is that checked exception obliges you to, do, to add this sketch block, even if in 90% of cases you really don't know what to do. Uh, so this increased the perceived verbosity of Java for no reason. Uh, so the message in, in the end is in, your, in the signature of your uh, Java API, avoid putting uh, throws uh, a checked exception, avoid put throws uh, IO exception or whatever it is, because you are making the life of the consumer of your API harder. Okay, uh, different topic. Um, in this very simple example, I wanted to read uh, uh, from a file uh, and place the result in a byte array. What I'm doing wrong here? Of course, I'm forgetting to close the file input stream, so I have a, 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 a file pointer uh, leak and this will eventually lead to, to, to some malfunctioning of my system. Okay, so what I have to do is uh, every time I do this stuff, I have to remember that I have to use a try finally block closing the stream inside the finally uh, part. Uh, and I can make it a little nicer from Java 7 by using the try with resources syntax. But I have to remember to do this stuff. It's a leaky abstraction, okay? And I have to remember that every time I, I do this stuff, I have to close that stream. And if I forget, I'm, 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 a, I'm having a, 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 a leaky file pointer. And I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to force the user of my API to always remember that every time you do step one, you also have to do step two. What is the solution for this? Is, uh, is this, okay? I created uh, this uh, with file method uh, that it takes a consumer of uh, a file input stream. Okay, uh, now again, I had the problem uh, with the IO exception, uh, so I had to, you, I couldn't use uh, a, a plain function, I have to define this throwing function thing that throws an IO exception because I needed to make the compiler happy for the checked exception. But apart for, for this, what I'm doing here, I defined this method with file, and the, in this method, which is uh, my internal implementation, uh, I always uh, use this file input stream in a try with resources block, okay? But this is in, in the internal implementation of the API. So I'm exposed this with file method to my user, and if, if my user always call this with file by passing the name of file input stream, wha what my API does, it, it, it creates the file input stream 
but it is still in control of the life cycle of the file input stream. So this is why it's called the long pattern, I guess, in Scala, mostly. Uh, it creates this resource. It loans you the resource through the lambda. You use the resource, and then you implicitly return back the control to the API implementation. And, and is, is, is my API in control of it, in control of the life cycle of the file input stream, and uh, it will ensure that every time you, it opens a, new, a file input stream, it will also close it. If you use this method, you, will, you cannot forget anymore of closing your file input stream. Why? Because it's no longer a leaky abstraction. You are no longer in control of that resource, the API is. Which is, if you think about it, exactly the same thing that the stream API does in many cases. You don't tell to the, it's more a declarative style of programming. You do the same with the stream API. You are no longer in control of, of the resource to be iterated, but you just declaratively say map or, or sum or, or do operation on this thing, but the stream API is in control on how to do stuff. And, and this is why they can do it in a lazy way, because the stream API is in control on how to process the pipeline of operation that you defined, and then at that point, it can do it lazily. Okay, one more different topic. Okay, as I said, I'm uh, the project lead of Drus, which is the rule engine of Red Hat. Uh, I, uh, a few years ago, I had to uh, review the API uh, of, uh, of, of the rule engine, of, and of course, our rule engine is a quite complex beast, and, and I ended up with, uh, 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 well, this, the, I changed it a bit the name, but it was something similar to, to this. One single interface, because I just wanted one single entry point, with literally hundreds of methods, so it was not really manageable. So what I did at that point is that I split it for responsibility. So you uh, can do different things on of my rule engine, which are uh, managing the resources to be uh, um, compiled to create, uh, to create the, 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 non the knowledge base, the rule base. You can send different commands to the rule engine uh, you can manage the repository of the rule base in different way. And instead of having all this method in one single big interface, I just split the responsibility. So you still have one single entry point, but from that entry, entry point, you jump to the uh, other uh, uh, interface that uh, provide you the service for the responsibility that you want to use. Uh, and then at that point, uh, you will have a smaller set, more manageable set of method that you can use. So it, it's the uh, uh, common dividend impera approach that is uh, uh, applied to, to, to this, this situation. Uh, another thing that is important is uh, defend your data. Be defensive with, with your data. What I mean is that some, sometimes it happens that uh, you have a getter that returns you a data structure, and the problem here is that uh, it's the live data structure. So it's the live list of sibling of that person. So by mistake or, or even ma maliciously, I don't know, somebody can Call that get sibling, you, you are returned with the li live list, and then you add stuff into that list. The problem is that uh, by doing so, you are corrupting the, 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 the sibling list of that person, and you don't want to do this. So, of course, the obvious way to fix this problem is just returning a, an unmodifiable collection, a modifiable list. Uh, so you are preventing your uh, uh, user to corrupt the data. And uh, another um, suggestion is uh, avoid to return null. 
Okay, null is another thing. N null and null pointer exception is uh, like check at exception, another thing that I don't like. So, uh, of course, you don't, if you, this person doesn't have any siblings, you don't return a null, you return an empty collection. Why? Because the moment I try to iterate it with, uh, with the, that for loop, I just take a null pointer exception, which is totally unexpected. And in the same way, uh, I use the type system to model something, okay? So I, I'm modeling with this simple uh, Java object that a person can have zero or more siblings or and may or may not have a car, okay? So you use the type system to say this thing, okay? Uh, a person must have a name, so it sh the get name shouldn't be an optional. But a person may or may not have a car, so you not return the car. You say with your domain model that uh, the car is optional. So you return an optional of a car, not the car itself, okay? So this is not only prevents you to get no pointer exception, and we will return there, but uh, also, uh, again, say with the type system a fact that is implicit in your domain model. Uh, another suggestion is really avoid Boolean in your uh, public API. It's very hard to figure out how to use the, them. I have this employee contact and uh, I have this uh, method that returns the phone number and uh, I have to pass a Boolean to say if I want the mobile number or not. And then when I need to use this method, I have no clue if I, I should put a true or false here. I need to read the method to what it does. Probably the, the, the name of the variable name could give me a clue. And finally, I will figure out if I should put a true or false here. So uh, this is uh, 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 error prone, hard to read, uh, even because not only the problem is not only when you write this thing, but every time you read it, you say get for number false. Uh, what was that false? You, it, it, it doesn't give you a meaningful message. So what the obvious, and, and the other problem of Boolean is that uh, you have uh, you have only uh, two two values. So what you do if you have to add a, a third value. Okay, one answer could be, okay, transform the Boolean uh, primitive with the Boolean type, and then you can use null as a third value. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Uh, please don't do this, of course, but uh, the solution is put an enumeration here, and uh, you will immediately understand uh, when, at that point, even when you read it, that uh, you are asking for the home uh, for number in that case. Uh, related to this, uh, please try to use, again, use the type system to model your domain, okay? Well, I, I, I have these uh, uh, um, employee registries in, my, in this example, and I'm returning all the numbers of this e of my employees. And what's the, the way I'm doing this? I have a map of a map of a list, okay? Where the uh, uh, outside map is the list, of the, the map of all the number indexed by the employee name. And then I have a second map, which is indexed by the font type. And for that font type, I have a list of all the number of, of, of of uh, that phone type for that employee, okay? It's very hard to use this stuff. I, you, have n you immediately forget what, what this nested data structure does, and, and it's very hard to use this stuff. I, I call this primitive obsession because you have these building blocks that are map and list and, and the combination of them, and you are exposing them uh, which are your primitive building blocks, but uh, you are exposing them to your end user. The solution for this, of course, is, again, use the type system, 
and to model your domain. So you have an employee registry, you have, uh, then you have a phone book, and then uh, for, with the phone book uh, you uh, can ask for the employee contacts for a given employee, and uh, for that employee contacts you can ask for a specific uh, uh, phone type. Okay, so this is m much easier to be used, okay? Probably it's a little more verbose for you to implement, but your first goal is to provide a nice API. And this is much nicer to be used. Okay, so uh, we spoke a lot about a null pointer exception, uh, talk about uh, uh, API in Java, but really any talk in Java is not complete if you don't speak about optional, of course. Um, and uh, uh, of course, I'm strongly opinionated about this topic because I'm a good Java developer, so why not? Uh, my, what's my problem? What is my problem with this thing? Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, notice that uh, they use uh, the uh, uh, stati static factory method uh, pattern, which is nice. You don't build and you don't say new optional, which is nice. But uh, my other problem with this stuff is the first time I saw this, it broke the principle of less astonishing to me. Why? Because uh, uh, my idea was, yeah, I want to use an optional to avoid the null pointer exception. Then I call off null, where off is the, uh, uh, you know, to me is the default uh, static factory method of an optional. And I pass a null to it, and guess what? I get a null pointer exception. And it was really, really surprising to me. I mean, it, it broke, I was astonished. It broke the pin principle of, of least astonishment, okay? Um, so I, I don't know why it is designed th th this way. Uh, I understand that probably you may want this behavior, but the problem is that I question at least that this should be the default behavior. And to me, a, a name made of a method name made of two letters is the, the default thing that you want to people to use. And if you do so, you will get an up pointer exception. So at least it's not the right default. Okay? And if and probably again, I don't know if you really need to get an null pointer exception if you pass a null to the satisfactory method of an optional. Probably you don't. If, and uh, if you don't, then you give the semantic of the of nullable method to the of method. And then at that point, you don't need the second method at all. So this is my take about this. Okay, But then, of course, uh, I started uh, discussing this thing uh, uh, on um, on Twitter, because why not? It's, Twitter is the perfect uh, uh, place to discuss this stuff, right? Uh, and then, of course, I, I but, but this time I, I must say that uh, I have lots of interesting uh, conversation. So the reason why I pasted uh, this uh, uh, list of tweets that uh, you will see in the next slide is not because you are supposed to, to read them, the slides are there, you can read them later, but because I wanted to show you that it's always nice to have a discussion about this uh, uh, kind of stuff. Designing a good API is an iterative process that you don't do in, you don't do in isolation, but you do discussing uh, with people. And uh, if you do so, you probably will realize that uh, there are different use cases. And uh, yeah, there are uh, I, you see this that use cases, but for you as a different way that could have f uh, f for me and vice versa. So it's, it's nice to discuss, okay, this is the most common thing for me or not. And, and probably there, there could be use cases that uh, you, you didn't see a lot. So uh, Trisha here told me, um, yeah, you cannot make the assumption that you don't want a null pointer exception when you are uh, creating an optional because you may want uh, to throw a, in your domain model, you may want to throw an error if you are trying to create 
an empty optional that way with a null. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, uh, Brian pointed out uh, some, uh, something similar, and I, I want seeing these use cases at all. So having this sort of interaction, of course, doesn't change my mind because I'm strongly opinionated, so I, I will never... I will never admit that I was wrong, but at, at least uh, it is a, a nice discussion to have, right? Uh, 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 because it gives you uh, uh, a, a broader point of view. It, it, it makes you understand that uh, an API has many different characteristics, and as I said, it's a, a balancing effort. You, you cannot make everybody happy, but you should find the, the, the most uh, 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 meaningful trade-off at the end of your analysis. And uh, uh, the other thing important uh, to underline when designing an API is the intent, okay? And probably this was my biggest misunderstanding at time, at time for the optional use case, because my the the intent that I implicitly gave to the optional was, okay, this is the tool for me to avoid null pointer exception. And uh, starting from that uh, probably biased point of view, I was surprised of getting a null pointer exception, of course. But probably this is not the main intent of the optional. The main intent of the optional was in reality, the one that I, I mentioned it before, the fact that with optional, you are modeling the fact that with your type system, you are saying with your type system that that object, that value may or may not be there. Okay, so that's the main intent of the optional in reality. I assumed a different intent, and I was surprised by my, my own assumption. Okay? So... Why I'm saying that? I'm saying this, again, to underline the fact that uh, uh, API design is an iterative process. You try, you do, so, you do something, then uh, what I do is uh, I just write the signature of the method that I have in mind, an empty signature without implementing it. Then I start writing the test, but uh, I'm not mainly because I'm a TTD fanboy, but because I, I, it's the way... I put a, 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 um, I start trying the API myself for the first time. And if I don't like my own API, it's very unlikely that you will. So it's a way to put my stuff a try. It's a way to do, let's say, dog feeding. And if you don't do dog feeding, if you do sliding doors and your door is not a sliding one, there is something wrong. I mean, you should use your own stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm, 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 I'm writing, again, again, talk to your uh, colleagues, uh, uh, um, check for unclear intention, clarify the intent of your API, uh, remove leaky obstruction, but th the best thing that, uh, the best advice that I can give you is uh, try in your own stuff, use your own stuff. If you don't like it, nobody will. And that's all what I have. Uh, again, it was, I understand this was, yeah, sort of opinionated talk. Uh, it was really based on my experiences uh, with a few years of Java development. Uh, your mileage may vary, you may have uh, different uh, experiences. Uh, I'd like to share them with you. Uh, if you have any uh, objection, uh, Mm, something that you want to clarify or any question, please let me know here or, or offline if you prefer. Thanks.